not all be in the same place. Know that very well, child of God. Do you think that someone on their deathbed that receives Jesus will be in the same realm and dimension with Elijah and Moses? No. No. Because that person has not been able to cultivate their spirit. They don't have that excellent spirit yet. Spirit man can be perfected. You have to understand that when God created man, he saw that it was good. Right? So there is a good spirit. And then Daniel speaks about having an excellent spirit. That is why, you know, most people, even myself, when I'm moving in the prophetic, I will speak in tongues within time. I'm trying to retrieve some information in my subconscious mind. Because the truth of the matter is, we are all connected. <laughs> we are all connected. The Bible says, God creates a man and both at the same time. But then you see in Genesis chapter. Bible says, and God breathed. And in fact, anytime the Bible says that Jesus came to fulfill the law and the prophets, the law was Moses, the prophets was Elijah. That is why Elijah and Moses appeared to Jesus on the mountain of transfiguration, symbolizing the, the law and the prophets. And he's the fulfillment of those two things. Do you understand? You see, Moses entered into a place where he entered into the council of the Godhead. He was subjected to the person, to the word of a man that he created. He's saying, I'm submitting myself to those words. Mm. But God created the man prophet. Mm. He knew the prophet before he formed him in his mother's womb, before he formed her in her mother's womb. Father, Holy Spirit, I command you everything that you've given her. I command you, begin to come out. Begin to come out. You marine spirits, begin to come out. Every demonic projection, the poison that you fed her, the poison that you fed her, begin to cough it up. Begin to cough it up now. Begin to cough it up now. Out of her system. Out of her system. Out of her system. No life, no life, no life. You are free from every bondage. Amen. Your birthright has been restored. 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 Yes. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Look at me. Look at me. Talita Kuma. Restored. Amen. Restored. Amen. Restored. Restored. Prophesy! 
I don't know why, but I'm seeing him like dancing. I don't know why, but I'm seeing him dancing. But then I'm like, why is he dancing? And I listen to him. And I don't know why, but I saw him dancing to like praise music. Was he in the house of God? Did he like go to church? Did he love God? Prophesy! I saw him. me to tell you right now don't worry he's in the bosom of Jerusalem
God bless you. God bless you. This is the prophet here. And I'm so excited for you to join me yet once again. I believe that God is getting ready to release fresh manna into your life. I believe that God is getting ready to release something new in your life. And at the end of this message, I know for a truth and I am guaranteed that your life will never be the same because light is coming forth into your souls right now. The Bible says, and of course, you already know one of my favorite scriptures is the entrance of thy word gives light and gives understanding to the simple. You see, one thing that I've come to understand about the word of God is the word of God comes in simplicity. And those things that are simple are not easy. Many people think that those things that are simple are easy. Um, it may be simple to drive a car, but it is not easy. You have to go to school. You have to gain knowledge. Now, the ultimate key in entering into that place of simplicity is knowledge. And I know this may be shocking to you, but look in the scripture. The Bible says the entrance of that word gives light. Now, when you pay attention to the word light, anytime the Bible is speaking about light, it is speaking about illumination. It is speaking about revelation. You see, the more there is light within the place, the more understanding comes. You see, being in a place of darkness means to be in a place of confusion and ignorance. So anytime when the word of God comes, the word of God comes to expose those places in your life that is ignorant in order for understanding and illumination to come. Because once illumination comes, transformation now occurs. That's why the Bible says, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of the mind. So when light comes, it comes to renew, renew those things that have become darkened in your life in order to transform you into a different state of being. And I believe that as the word of God comes, you're going to be transformed into a different state of being. All right. But before we get into the message, I want you to hit the like button, hit the like button right now, hit the like button. Also, make sure you enter into the live chat and let me know. Let me know where you're connected from. Let me know where you're connected from. And also, if you're ready, I want you to type and say, Prophet, I'm ready. Prophet, I'm ready. Prophet, I'm ready. Prophet, I'm ready. Uh, let me see the fire. Drop the fire emojis. Let me know that if you're excited. Today, we are speaking about the spirituality of life. Type that right now. The spirituality of life. The spirituality of life. The spirituality of life. Um, it's important that we are to understand the concept of this life that we are in. The more you understand that this life is spiritual, you will be or you will have an upper hand advantage when it comes to making some certain decisions in your life. The reason why there is so much confusion, the reason why so many people ask God, why me, is because they don't understand the scope, the scope and the depth of what takes place in their life spiritually. This realm is what we call the physical realm. Now, how did this realm come into being? And why did it come into being? We're going to go to the scriptures right now. We're going to go to Genesis. We're going to go to Genesis right now. And we're going to read from Genesis chapter 1. 
and it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So you see by this scripture automatically, God created the spiritual before he created the physical. God established the spiritual before he created the physical. The Lord Jesus Christ said, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, understanding that prayer, it should give you a clearer understanding on the mind of God and what he wants to take place within the earth. He said, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So you see, the reason why God established the heavens first and the earth second is because he wanted the earth to be a reflection of those things, of those activities that take place in heaven. God created the heavens and the earth. So God created the earth to be a mirror to reflect heaven. Amen. Now, many people desire to make it to heaven. That is everyone's desire to make it into heaven. Now, Jesus said that will be done on earth as it is in heaven, meaning as children of the kingdom, we are to live heaven here on earth. Jesus said this, he said, if they say to you that the kingdom of God is over there, and you have to go and search for it. Just know that you've been deceived because the kingdom of God is in you and around you. So, heaven is not a place. It's not a geographical location that you can go there by your feet. And you see, in order for you to live heaven on earth, it takes a state of mind. In order for you to experience heaven, for you to experience the reality of heaven, it depends on how your mind has been wired. The greatest channel that God has given to us for us to interact with those things that are spiritual is the mind. Um, and the truth is, the mind is your God attribute. I want you to type that. Type that. Heaven, I mean, your mind is the God attribute. And you will understand why I call the mind the God attribute. Um, let us continue reading. It says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Now, in verse 1, the Bible says God created the heavens and the earth, but he didn't create the earth by speaking. In fact, God never spoke in verse 1, but God was still able to create. So your creative ability is in the mind, and that is something that God has given every 
single person here. He has given us the gift of the mind. The mind is a gift. You see, one thing that I've come to understand and one thing that I've learned, um, I'm not speaking about the occult, but I'm just going to touch on it because those people that are in the occult, they take a grasp of your mind because they know the power that it has. Because the enemy knows that the moment he gets a grasp of your mind, he gets a grasp of you in totality. The Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So when the enemy can take your mind, he takes your identity. That is why you see so many people mentally oppressed in this time and age is because the enemy is after the identity of people. He will confuse you and make you think that you are something that you are not. He will give you a false reality of life. But the truth is, the Bible says that God has called us to be spiritually minded. The Bible says to be spiritually minded is life and peace. But to be carnally minded is death. Now, what does it mean to be carnal? And what does it mean to experience death? Now, God has wired us to be beings that can not only interact with the physical, but also interact with the spiritual. That is why God has formed us from the dust of the ground. And the Bible says that he breathed his spirit into man and man became a living soul. Why was the soul ever created? The soul is the middle man between the spirit and the body. And God gave us the soul so that the spirit and the body can be together. The, the soul is, is, is the connector that keeps the spirit and the body together. But you see, why is it that the enemy is after your soul and not your spirit? You have to ask yourself, why is it that God is also after your soul and not your spirit? It is the salvation of souls, right? It is the soul that becomes saved. It is the soul that becomes possessed. Because for people that suffer with demonic oppression and demonic possession, they experience these things within the soul. So when an evil spirit enters into you, they don't possess your spirit. They don't even possess your body. What use do they have of your body? Um, I know that many people think that there are evil spirits in the graveyards and, and all that stuff. There's no evil spirits there because there's no souls. It's just bodies. And spirits need souls to operate. Although they need a body, they also need a soul because the soul is like the control center. It's like the remote control. So the enemy will possess the soul will take over the mind, will take over your emotions. You see, God has given us so many emotions. There is anger. There is sadness, uh, happiness, anxiety, fear, um, embarrassment. There, there, there's so much emotions. There's hundreds of emotions. I know you may think the, ba the basics are sadness. 
uh, happiness and anger, right? That's those are the ones that we are all aware of. But there are hundreds of emotions. There's there's an ability that God has given you within your soul that that is what the enemy is after. Um, the ability to be in your right mind is a gift. And that is why the enemy is after the minds of people. It's after the souls of people. I was explaining before a few moments earlier, and I said that those people that are in the occult, you know, in the high and high places in society, the moment they leave that lifestyle, you will find them on the streets gone insane. Why is it that the enemy knows? Because the thing is, those people know and they are trying to find a way out. And because they're trying to find a way out, they don't know the way to Christ. They don't have anyone that is privileged enough to witness to them and telling them that there is a way out. There is deliverance for you. So they leave physically without dealing with something spiritual first. So what the enemy will do, because the enemy does not want them to repent, because repentance is not saying, God, I'm sorry. How many people are saying, God, I'm sorry in church, but yet their, their state of mind is still the same. You will know what changed man, not based on his outward appearance but you will know a changed man, a changed woman based on the words that they speak because the words that they speak is the evidence of a reality that has happened within the soul. It's a reality of transformation that has taken place within the soul. So the enemy will capture their mind, will hold their mind captive because the enemy does not want them to repent because repentance is the change. It's to change your state of mind. So before they can change their state of mind, the enemy will capture it. How many of you have seen, you've seen that before? People on the streets. There's some people, yes, they've, those may have to do with drugs, but there's some people that were, that they were, they were to the top. You don't even know. They were in high places in society. Many of them were in the occult, unfortunately. And because they tried to escape it, they have not lost their mind. They're, not, they're no longer the same. <sighs> Type life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. Let me continue in Genesis. Let's continue. And you will know why God placed man here on the earth. Um, I've come to understand that the reason why God created us is not for us to worship. Do you know that? We were not created to worship, although we are to worship him. But that is not the reason why God created us. It's bigger than that. You see, the, the, the sooner you know that, the better. Because the enemy will also cause us to despise the, where God has placed us as his creation. The Bible says, I say unto you, ye are gods, but because you know not, you will die like me, amen. The angels even said, what is man? that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him. Do 
he has made us to be higher than the angels. But let's let's go to the scripture. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And it says Genesis chapter one, verse twenty six. It says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Now, verse 28, it says, Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, feel, and subdue. Subdue the earth and have dominion over every living thing that moves on the earth. So God created us for us to manage the earth. That's what the Bible says creation is earnestly waiting for the manifestation of the sons. Creation is waiting for man to take their place back. To take our place back. And where God has placed us to be stewards on the earth. You see, the reason why we cast out devils is because number one, spirits have no legal entry into this realm. Anything that does not have a body is not permitted to be here. Do you know as powerful as God is, he needs you. He needs your permission to be and to carry out his will on the earth. If there is no man that can yield themselves to the will of God, then God cannot function here. Because one thing is, God said this. He said, I will honor my word above my name. Do you know what that means? That whatsoever God says, he will honor it before himself. He will honor his words, his covenants before himself. And he said, let them, he never said we are to have, he never said dominion will be given to me if man fails. No, even after man fell, dominion was still given to man. Dominion was still given to man. Spirits have no legal rights to be here. That is why God is looking for men and women that he can use. People that will yield himself, yield themselves to the Holy Spirit. The enemy is also looking for men and women that he can operate through. God is looking for men and women who he can operate through. There are two spirits that are in operation. 
and it matters who you yield yourself to. That will be the spirit that will operate through you. Because this life is spiritual. It doesn't matter. It's either you're on one side or the other. It doesn't matter who you yield yourself to. That's the truth. And that's one thing that I'll always do is tell you the truth because it is from love. They are Christians that have yielded themselves to the wrong spirit. They may think that they have yielded themselves to God, but because they lack the understanding and what God is doing in this time, in this season, they have yielded themselves to the wrong spirit. Everything that is happening within this world, within our world, is spiritual. You see, before you look and see something physical and react physically, you need to investigate what is the spirit that is behind this? What is the spirit that is an operation that has just taken place? How many of you, you all know who Abraham Lincoln is, right? Do you know that the man that assassinated Abraham Lincoln never knew and what led him to be in the same theater behind Abraham Lincoln? What led him there? What led him to be in the same theater seated behind Abraham Lincoln? You have to understand that your thoughts, your thoughts is a projection of the activities that are taking place within the spiritual realm. And the Bible says that the scriptures that we read were written by men that were inspired by God. Now, many people say that the Bible was written by God himself. No, that's not what the Bible says. It says it was written by men under the inspiration. Inspiration comes from a divine place. Inspiration is 100% spiritual. Because everything that you see that has been created came from the inspiration of a man. It came from the thought of a man, of a woman. There are spirits that are constantly bringing signals to you and you don't even realize it. But how do you know that these thoughts that I have, they come from God. Number one, the Bible says, all good things come from above. So it's simple. If God tells you to help someone, you think it's yourself. It's the voice of God. When God tells you, after someone has done you wrong, to make peace. Do you think it's yourself? No. It's God. You're under the inspiration of God. The thing is, many people are waiting for that audible voice. My son, forgive her. No. When God speaks, he speaks spirit to spirit. It's like telepathy because you both share the same mind because his spirit dwells within you. So your spirit being in your body, that is what carries his voice. That is the evidence that is with you now and always. You are the evidence of God being everywhere. Do you know that? Why is it that 
God is everywhere, that He's only present, He can be in different places at the same time, is because we are all in different locations. We are the extension of God. So God is in Texas because there are people that are in Texas. God is in New York because there are people that are in New York. God is in Maryland because there are people that are in Maryland. God is in, is in Nigeria because there are people that are in Nigeria. Because the Bible says that his glory fills the earth. Who is that glory? Is you. Amen. God wants you to gain this understanding. Because when you get this understanding, your whole perception of this life will change. It will change completely. Now back to the story with Abraham Lincoln. Do you know that the man did not know what led him to go to that theater? The man was after Abraham, but he just had a thought to enter into the theater. And all of a sudden, the man that he wanted to kill was right in front of him. And he pulled out the gun, pulled the trigger, and killed the president. Why? How? What led him? It came by inspiration. The mind can be your asset it can be the enemy's playground. That's why it's important to yield yourself to the Holy Spirit, to be grounded in Him. You say, Father, from this day, I yield my mind to you. Help me to walk in alignment with your thoughts. Help me to speak as you would speak. Help me to see situations like you would see it. You know, when you face that situation where they're expecting you to give a reaction, you don't react because there is a wisdom that's inside of you that is greater than the wisdom of this world. You see, what, what the world titles foolishness, God calls it wisdom. Because you may enter into a situation where someone who wants you to react, they may provoke you. And you don't react the way how they expected you to react. In that situation, you may look weak and you may look foolish but you are operating at such a high level of wisdom. Because wisdom is what keeps you the understand. You need to understand that When God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed his spirit into man, you need to understand something. There's the creation and then there's the formation. Why is it in Genesis chapter 1 it says God created man? But then in Genesis chapter 2, it says God formed man. Your body is the formation. Your spirit is the creation.
why is it that God said, let us make man in our image? Wait a minute. The Bible says that Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. So there's a part of God that has an image. But what is that image? Why is it that God decided to give man a body? Why couldn't he allow you to be just spirits without a body? It was in the mind of God to make your entire state of being a reflection of who he is. By God breathing his spirit into your body, you now have something supernatural that is in you daily. What do you think that is waking you up every day? Do you think it's just you? That is waking you up every morning, and every day, and giving you direction. You think that is your thoughts, but it's not your thoughts. God has brought you on a specific path. Your tomorrow is no shock to him. And that is the truth. The Bible says he breathed the breath of life. The Greek word for life is zoe, which means the God kind of life. So when he breathed into you, he gave you his kind of life. Meaning that the life of God exists in you daily. Why is it? And I tell people this. Oxygen is not keeping you alive. There are people that are under machines that help them to breathe what the same air that you are breathing but yet they're in between the place of life and death there is something that contains this body which is your spirit because the real you and the true you is not the body this is just close it's the spirit. You are a spirit being. I want you to type that in the comments. I am a spirit being. God is a spirit. So God wants you to be spiritually minded. He wants to bring you into that place. He wants to give you that mindset that he originally created for you to have because that's the only way you can take dominion over the earth over all creation dominion is not dictatorship dominion is authority and authority doesn't need to make noise authority is not even you don't need to speak to express your authority. Authority is a presence that exists within a man. You will know a man that carries authority. He doesn't need to speak. Just by the presence that they carry, you will see authority. Because authority is a spirit is a spirit that comes from God because God has given you authority. But you can only enter into that place when you understand the spirituality of life. 
there is Christianity and then there's spirituality. God never called anyone to be a Christian. And yes, I'm saying that, and I'm a Christian. God called you to be spiritual. God has called us to be in that place of spirituality. And you may ask me, what is spirituality? Spirituality is to live the God kind of life. Anything outside of that is carnality. There are other spiritual practices, but it's not the God kind of life. It's not even a fraction of the life that God has called us to live. Spirituality is a state of mind that brings life and peace. So I pray for you all in the name of Jesus. Those that are watching, just stretch your hands towards me. I pray for you that God will enlighten you, that light will come, that you will receive life and life more abundantly, that God will bring you into that place where you will know him for who he is, that he will reveal himself to you beyond your imagination. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Now, if you've been blessed, I want you to just type in the comments and say, Prophet, I've been blessed. Prophet, I've been blessed. Uh, uh, this was something, and I know that your mindset has changed. And I'm, I'm happy because it means that you're transforming into a new state of being. But this is Prophet William Elijah, and I'll see you next time. God bless you.